Welcome to the Tax Accounting and OneSource Corporate Tax Session, which was presented at the Thomson Reuters Synergy Conference held in November 2014. My name is Kate Whale and I'm going to take you through the session, which includes demonstrations of how the OneSource Corporate Tax software can help you with your tax accounting processes. So let's have a quick look at the agenda and what we are aiming to cover in this session today. Firstly, we will touch on the change of accounting standard that will affect all companies for periods starting on or after 1st of January 2015. We will then look at what we have in OneSource Corporate Tax to help you with your tax accounting, starting with the new J-Sheets, which are for tax accounting under FRS 102. We will then have a look at the I-Sheets, which support the balance sheet approach to tax accounting under IFRS and FRS 101. Due to the change in accounting standard, we know our customers will be faced with preparing comparators under the new accounting standard. As such, we have added the option to create a new tax accounting archive file, which will help you to do this. We will take a brief look at this functionality. We will then have a look at some of the other options available to you, including the standalone tax accounting module and group consolidation. Lastly, we will touch on a couple of harder areas, such as RDEC, and how we have tried to make the tax accounting sheets flexible to support different accounting policies. We will lastly look at what is coming in the next release. So all companies must switch accounting standard for periods starting on or after 1st of January 2015. We expect that most of our users will switch to either FRS 101, FRS 102, or IFRS. The question is, are you ready? Well, we have ensured that OneSource Corporate Tax is ready to help you with your tax accounting processes. The F-Sheets have been available for a number of years and support tax accounting under UK, old UK GAAP. These will be available to you until no one can possibly be doing tax accounting under old UK GAAP any longer. The I-Sheets have been available since 2011 and allow you to adopt the tax basis balance sheets approach under IFRS and FRS 101. The new J-Sheets are available from 2014 onwards and support tax accounting under the new UK GAAP, FRS 102. This means you'll be able to prepare your comparative 2014 tax accounting figures under FRS 102. We also have a standalone tax accounting module. This may be useful for you if you do not want to calculate your tax accounting figures in the same file as your tax return figures. We will look into this in more detail later on. You can also consolidate all of your tax accounting numbers into the group module. So let's look at FRS 102 and the new J sheets. In brief, we have tried to make these new sheets intuitive, flexible, and easy to use. The functionality was added in July 2014 and is therefore available for those early adopting FRS 102 or for preparing your 2014 comparison figures under FRS 102. The sheets follow the income statement approach and provide a reconciliation to total tax, both of which are required under FRS 102. The sheets link to the group module and are also available in standalone tax accounting files. So how can these J sheets help you? Well, the tax accounting disclosure notes are populated automatically for you based on information in your draft tax computation and other information entered into your J-sheets. You have flexibility over your disclosure captions and hopefully limited data entry before your tax accounting disclosures are complete. When you have finalised your tax accounting numbers, you can freeze the tax accounting sheets and then continue to use the same file for your tax return figures. When you roll forward the file, there is an automatic calculation of any prior adjustments which details the differences between your tax accounting figures and your tax return figures. You can also use the tax accounting archive functionality for preparing your comparators under 2014. 
So let's have a look at the J sheets within OneSource Corporate Tax. The new FRS 102 sheets extract information from your tax computation to prepare the tax accounting disclosures for your accounts. This provides great efficiency for your tax compliance processes as the draft tax computation for tax accounting and the tax computation for the return can be prepared in the same file using much of the same data. The FRS 102 tax accounting sheets are developed from either the A or the D sheet. Under the Develop menu, choose Develop, Other, FRS 102 Tax Account, Income Statement Approach. I will briefly run through each of the sheets in turn, and then we will look at how to complete your tax accounting in the J sheets. For those familiar with the F and the I sheets, the J sheet follows the same layout. This is the tax account, which details all current and deferred tax balances from opening to closing, including amounts charged to equity or OCI, and any payments made in the period. The carry forward per comps column is the suggested closing deferred tax and current tax balances as calculated by one source. You must, however, confirm that these figures are the correct figures for your accounts by entering the amounts into the carry forward per accounts column manually. If you are happy with the figures in the carry forward per comps column, you can press the button to automatically populate these values for you. I will click on this button later. We then have the tax accounting disclosures on J2. This sheet provides you with your tax accounting disclosures for your accounts under FRS 102 including the to reconciliation to total tax charge. Limited data entry should be required on this sheet. The proof of tax reconciles the expected tax charge on the profit or loss per the accounts to the actual total tax charge. All reconciling items are then allocated to a disclosure caption automatically with the option to reallocate as appropriate. These captions will then make up your total tax reconciliation captions, so you have complete flexibility over the wording. This sheet pulls through information from the tax computation in respect of timing differences, for example, fixed assets, short-term timing differences and losses. You can allocate balances to other comprehensive income or equity as appropriate, and if relevant, it is on here that you cannot recognise assets. You can do this by using the columns provided. On J5, this uses the information from J4 and tax effects, the timing differences, to calculate the, the net opening and closing deferred tax balances. No data entry should be required on here. However, you can override the tax rates on a line-by-line -line basis on the far right of this screen. This may be useful, for instance, if you wanted to disclose a foreign branch deferred tax balance at a different rate to that of the UK. We then have some working papers to support the calculations in the main sheets. On the tax input sheet, you can override the tax rates used to calculate the deferred tax balances. There are also a number of selectors which allow you to customise what you see in the tax accounting sheets, or perhaps allow you to choose how an item is treated for tax accounting purposes. The Fixed Asset Timing Differences sheet supports the Fixed Asset Timing Difference row on J4 and pulls in information from the Fixed Asset sheet and Capital Allowance sheets from the computation and aggregates, aggregates the numbers before passing them back to J4. If you have any items that should not qualify as part of the Fixed Asset Timing Differences, these should be entered on JW3 and they will be stripped out of the balances on JW2. 
There are a few further sheets that may be developed into a file. From J2, you can develop a disclosure narrative sheet. This provides example narrative to support the tax accounting figures in your accounts. This narrative can be amended as appropriate to your disclosures. From J, you can develop a group relief and other payments supporting sheet. This allows you to analyse your group relief, debt cap and other payment balances across different periods. And finally, from JW2, you can develop a foreign branch fixed asset sheet, which allows you to analyse branch assets separately to UK fixed assets, and therefore you can recognise them at a different rate if appropriate. So now let's go through an example of how to complete the tax accounting sheets and how they interact with the tax computation. Firstly, let's take a quick look at what's in the tax computation and we can see this summarised on the A sheet. We have non-deductible amounts in relation to our selling and marketing costs and transfer pricing adjustments. We have some depreciation and capital allowances and we have some deductible as paid movement. We can also see that we've made some tax payments in respect of this tax period. Looking at the C sheet, we can see we have some net book value brought forward and some additions in the period. Those additions pull through to the plant pool, so they're qualifying fixed assets. We also have our deductible as paid item. So let's see how these numbers are dealt with in the FRS 102 tax accounting sheets. We first take into the tax account where you can already see some of the information from the draft tax computation being pulled through automatically. In the current tax section, we can see the income tax charge for the period pulled through from the A sheet and also the tax payments on account relevant to this accounting period. This leaves us with our creditor at the period end of 58362. Any tax payments made not in relation to this accounting period are captured at the bottom of the sheet and rolled forward into the subsequent period. In the deferred tax section, we have amounts in relation to fixed assets and short-term time differences. We do not have any brought forward per accounts numbers as this is the first year we have used the J sheets. We will need to enter these on J4 as we carry on and complete the tax accounting sheets. We will leave completing the carry forward per accounts column until we have finished work on the rest of the sheets. So let's go to J4 and complete our de deferred tax figures. So this is the gross time interferences sheet and we can see that some numbers have already been pulled through for us. As mentioned earlier, the fixed asset time interferences row is supported by JW2. I can quickly review that sheet to see if any changes are required. JW2 pulls through information from the draft tax computation and aggregates it to provide the movement from open to closing time and difference amounts. Here you'll see the amounts are pulled through directly from the C sheet and the capital allowances sheet already for us. If you have any amounts on here that should not be included within the qualifying fixed asset time and differences amount, these should be stripped out on JW3. I'm happy, I am happy that my JW2 numbers are correct and no further work needs to be done. So I'll return to J4. As mentioned earlier, as this is the first year of using the J sheets, I need to enter my opening per accounts figures. On roll forward, these will be automatically populated for me. In this example, I'm saying that my opening per accounts is the same as my opening per computation. If they were different, one source would automatically calculate a prior adjustment for me. So then I look at the deductible as paid item. This has no opening balance, but a closing balance of 15,000, 
which pulls through directly from the tax computation sheet, C2. All the short-term time differences and losses pull through directly from the tax computation and not via a supporting sheet. All items are treated as going through the income statement by default. However, you may have items that should be recognised in equity or OCI. If this is the case, you should enter these figures manually in the columns provided. Also, if you have any assets or liabilities that should not be recognised, these can be entered in the not recognised column. Once we have completed J4, we can see the resulting deferred tax amounts on J5. This is populated automatically for us, based on the tax rates populated on the right hand side of the sheet. These can be overridden as required. Let's now go to the proof of tax to ensure we have no errors in our reconciliation. The proof of tax picks up information from the draft tax computation and other information entered into the tax accounting sheets. You can see it pulls through the expenses non-deductible and transfer pricing adjustments directly from the comp. It also picks up um, rate changes on our deferred tax assets as per J5. One source will automatically allocate reconciling items to a disclosure column. However, you can reallocate these as appropriate. You can also override the headings. These headings make up your total tax reconciliation headings on J2. If we scroll to the bottom, we can see that we, we do not have a reconciliation error. Therefore, our proof of tax is correct and no further work is required on this sheet. So now I'll go back to J. And because I've reviewed all my other sheets and I'm happy with the numbers, I can click populate the carry for per accounts column. I'll view this in final now. Once you have populated the carry for per accounts column, your tax and accounting disclosures are ready to be reviewed. As mentioned earlier, these are populated automatically for you and very limited data entry should be required on this sheet. The disclosures should mimic the disclosures required by FRS 102 accounting standard. FRS 102 requires you to disclose deferred tax assets and liabilities recoverable or payable within 12 months or after 12 months. One source defaults to everything being recoverable or payable within 12 months. If this is not correct, you should use the data entry cells to reallocate the amounts as appropriate. Well, I'm now happy that my tax accounting disclosures are complete. I should now freeze my numbers in the tax accounting sheets so that I can go on and use the same file for my tax return figures without worrying about the numbers in my tax accounting sheets changing. To do this, go to Tools, Application Tools, Freeze Values and Tax Accounting Sheets and choose the FRS 102 sheets. Some people like to save a copy of the A sheet at the time the tax accounting figures are finalised. This allows you to compare the A sheet as it was at the time you were preparing your tax accounting disclosures to that at the time that you submit your tax return. Click yes. This may be useful for seeing how the numbers have changed as the compliance process has proceeded. The figures in the J sheets are now frozen and cannot be changed. However, when you roll forward the file, if there have been any changes to the tax computation for the purpose of the tax return, 
These will be reflected as prior adjustments in the following period tax accounting sheets. The J-sheets can also be consolidated into the Group Tax Accounting J-sheets, if necessary for Group Tax Accounting. So in summary, we feel the J-sheets are intuitive. We have incorporated feedback on the F and the I-sheets, and taken the best bits from both to make the J-sheets. They are flexible, the tax rates can be overridden on a line-by-line -line basis, and you can build up your own tax accounting disclosures using the disclosure columns on the proof of tax. They are also simple to use. The proof of tax will highlight any issues with your reconciliation. There should be fairly limited data entry required. And we have included a button on the J sheet to automatically populate your carry for per accounts column. So now we'll take a look at IFRS and the I sheets. In brief, we think these sheets are comprehensive, flexible and easy to use. The functionality for IFRS under the Tax Basis Balance Sheet approach was added in November 2011. In response to feedback since then, we have included a proof of tax from 2014 onwards and also a new movement and deferred tax Assets or Liability Sheet, as required by the Tax Accounting Disclosures under IFRS. The I sheets allow you to, to prepare your Tax Accounting Disclosures under the Balance Sheet approach, and therefore can be used for FRS 101 or IFRS. The Tax Basis Balance Sheet itself drives the calculations. You can also deal with exempt and unrecognised amounts and amounts taken to other comprehensive income or the statement of equity. The I sheets are available in the standalone tax accounting files and also can be linked to the group module. So how can the I sheets help you? Well as already shown with the J sheets, the I sheets prepare the tax accounting disclosure notes for you hopefully with limited data entry required. You have flexibility over your disclosure captions within the, the tax accounting disclosures. Most of the data entry is on the tax basis balance sheet. However, you can complete as much on the tax basis balance sheet as you require. The categorization of movement selectors provide the basis on which we prepare the proof of tax for you. Once you have finalised your tax accounting numbers, you can freeze the I sheets. This means they will not continue to, to change as you can use your file to complete your tax return numbers. When you roll forward the file, one source will automatically calculate your prior adjustments for you. So the differences between the tax accounting numbers and your tax return submitted numbers. The tax accounting archive option is also available to you for the I sheets and will help you with your comparatives. The IFRS sheets extract information from your tax computation to help prepare the draft tax accounting disclosures for your accounts. This provides greater efficiency for your tax compliance processes as often the draft tax computation for tax accounting and the tax computation for the turn can be prepared in the same file using much of the same data. The IFRS sheets can be developed from either the A or the D sheet under the Develop menu. Choose Develop, Other, Tax Account, Tax Basis Balance Sheet Approach. I will now briefly run through each of the I sheets in turn and then we will move on to looking at how we prepare the tax accounting disclosures under IFRS. The I sheet is the tax account which details all current and deferred tax balances from opening to closing including amounts charged to equity or OCI. The carry for a per comps column is a suggested closing deferred tax balances and current tax balances as calculated by the software. 
You must, however, confirm that these figures are the correct figures for the accounts by entering amounts into the carry forward per accounts column. If you are happy with the figures in the carry forward per accounts column, you can press the button, which will automatically populate this figure, this column for you. We'll have a look at this in more detail later. The accounts disclosures sheet provides you with your tax accounting disclosures for your accounts under IFRS, including the reconciliation to total tax charge. Limited data entry should be required on the sheet. Again, we will review this in more detail once we have completed our other I sheets. I2A is a, is a continuation of the tax accounting disclosures under IFRS. As IFRS follows the balance sheet approach, I3 is the main sheet within the I sheets and where most of the data entry will be required. Under IFRS, you should go down your balance sheet per your accounts and list out all of your items in the accounts with the carrying amount and tax base for opening and closing. As one source does not hold all of the figures that are required for this, we do not try and populate this sheet automatically for you. However, at the bottom of the sheet, you will see that where we can pick up figures, we will do, do so for you and provide suggested figures that you should enter into your tax basis balance sheet. You should review this section before trying to complete the tax basis balance sheet. Once you've entered the opening and closing carrying amount and tax base for all of your items on your accounts balance sheet, you then need to think about what the movement of temporary differences relates to and choose a selector appropriately on this right hand side. We will look at this in more detail when we come to complete the example computation. This will then drive the proof of tax and populate the total tax reconciliation in your accounts for you. Once I3 is complete, you should move on to I4, where you can decide whether any of the temporary differences should be recognised in either equity or OCI instead of the income statement, and allocate them to the columns appropriately. If you have amounts that you do not wish to recognise, you should also enter them on here. The net temporary differences sheet picks up all figures from I4 and tax affects them, so no data entry should be required on here. However, if you wish to recognise any of the temporary differences at a different rate to that of the UK, you can do so by overriding the tax rates on the right hand side of the sheet. I6 will pick up all the information entered on I3, I4 and I5 and aggregates them to build up the proof of tax figures. There is also a reconciliation to items that have gone through the Adjustment to Profit sheet to check that the temporary differences are being allocated correctly on the balance sheet. As we have not completed the balance sheet yet, we have a reconciliation error here, but hopefully once we run through that, this will disappear. For files created after November 2014, they will also include a proof of tax which again will help you understand whether you've completed the tax basis balance sheet correctly. Again, we have a reconciling error here because we've not completed the tax basis balance sheet. But once we have done so, that should clear. On here, you can build up your total tax reconciliation disclosures by allocating figures to the correct columns. The caption headings here make up your total tax reconciliation and can be overridden if required, or amounts reallocated within this sheet. Finally, on IH you can override tax rates for the whole tax accounting file, or also change selectors to change the layout of your tax accounting disclosures and sheets. There are a couple of supporting sheets that are available to you. From I2, you can develop the disclosure narrative IFRS sheet which allows you to detail 
narrative to support your tax accounting figures for your accounts. From I, you can develop a group relief supporting sheet, which allows you to analyse group relief payments between periods, or perhaps debt cap or other payments. And finally, from I3, you can develop a tax basis balance sheet support sheet, which can be used to back up figures entered onto I3. We're now going to run through an example computation and how to complete our I sheets. I'm using the same computation that we used to look at the J sheets, so hopefully we're familiar with the numbers. Let's have a quick look at the A sheet. Here we can see we have a profit before tax. We have some non-deductible amounts. We also have some temporary differences in respect to fixed assets, the depreciation and the plant. And we also have a deductible as paid amount, which is a temporary difference of 15. We can also see we have paid some payments on account in the tax period. On C, we can see we have a net book value brought forward and carried forward with some qualifying fixed asset additions in the period, which are taken to our plant pool. So how do these pull through to the tax accounting sheets? Well, firstly, let's start with the I3 sheet, which is the main sheet for tax accounting under IFRS. Tax accounting under IFRS follows the balance sheet approach which means you should go down your balance sheet per your accounts and enter in the carrying amount for all items for opening and closing amounts. You should then allocate a tax base to these amounts dependent on how you are holding that asset or liability. For instance, if you're holding it for use, the tax base might be its tax rent round value or if you're holding it for sale, it might be its capital gains cost. Because not all of these figures are held within our tax computation, one source does not try and pull these figures through for you automatically. You need to enter these amounts onto I3. However, we do provide a section at the bottom which pulls through figures that we can pick up from the tax computation that might be relevant for your tax basis balance sheet. For instance, we, you can see we have pulled through the capital allowance values for our assets because there is a chance that this is probably the tax base of these items. You should review this section before completing the tax basis balance sheet. So let's fill this in. So what do we have in our computation? Well, first of all, we know that we have some fixed assets. We have a net book value brought forward of 120 and carry forward of 230. So I'm going to enter these on my I3. Hundred twenty brought forward and carry forward of 230. I've used a property plant and equipment row, but you can use whichever row fits your disclosures or you can overwrite this with um, with narrative appropriate for you. We must now think about what the tax base is in relation to this. Well, we know that we're holding these assets for use as we are, these are also within our capital allowance pool. So our tax base is our tax written down value. So our opening tax written down value is 100 and our closing is 205. So we'll also enter these in. Once we've done this, we should move across the total temporary differences for the period will be calculated for you. You need to think about what those temporary differences actually relate to and whether they affect the adjustment to profit. Is there an equal and opposite deferred and current tax charge? Well, we know because we've seen on the A sheet that we had depreciation and capital allowances going through our adjustment to profit. So these do affect our adjustment to profit and there is an equal and opposite current and deferred tax effect. 
This is important, as this column should say yes or no, depending on whether these items affect your adjustment to profit or not. And that will determine how the total tax reconciliation is built up on I2. We'd expect the most items would be yes. However, if for instance, the temporary differences of 5,000 related to a, re a revaluation or something that did not affect my adjustment to profit, which only had a deferred tax effect, then I'd need to change this caption so that the item in adjustment to profit changes to no. So let me choose revaluation here. You'll see now that column X says no. And this will end up being a reconciling item in my total tax reconciliation. On I8, you can see a list of all the items you can choose and the corresponding yes or no if you choose those items. I'm, for the purpose of the example, we need to change this back to fix asset time and differences. So what else did we have in our computation? Well, we also have a deductible as paid amount. This has no opening balance, but does have a closing balance of 15,000. We also know that this movement has gone through the adjustment to profit. So let's go to I3. In the liability section, I will enter it on the provisions row. Again, you can enter it on any row you like and override the caption. The carrying amount per the accounts is 15,000. The tax base is actually zero because the tax base of a liability is the carrying amount less any amounts that are deductible in future periods, which we know will get a deduction for 15,000 at some point in the future. So the tax base is 15 less 15, which equals zero. So our total temporary differences are 15. And as I've shown you, these have gone through adjustment to profit. So I'm happy that the column X says yes. And this will have no effect on our total tax reconciliation, as we have an equal and opposite current and deferred tax movement. On the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side of the sheet, we have an option to categorise each of these items. And these will build up what the deferred tax balance captions are in our, on I2. This is defaulted to other, but actually I would like to call it something else. So I'm going to call this temporary differences trading. When we look at I2, you'll notice that the 15,000 will now be disclosed as temporary differences trading in our disclosures. Further up, this one has already defaulted to fixed assets. But again, I could change this to something else if I so wish. So I'm now happy that I've completed I3. I'm going to move on to I4. As you'll see, all items default to being recognised in the income statement. However, if this is not correct and these should be allocated to OCI or equity, you should do so by reallocating to these columns. Or, if the amount should not be recognised, you should fill in the not recognised column. For the purposes of this example, I'm happy that everything is going through the income statement. Once I4 is complete, you should move on to I5. However, limited data entry at all should be required on here. Basically, this takes the figures from I4 and tax affects them to give you your deferred tax balances for your accounts. As mentioned earlier, you can, however, override the tax rates on a line-by-line -line basis if this is necessary. I'll now move on to I6, which aggregates everything that we've entered on the I3, I4 and I5. The sheet is split into sections, dependent on the decisions made on I3 as to whether items are going through the adjustment to profit or not. As you will see, both our items are going through the adjustment to profit, so they are in the adjustment to profit section. 
As mentioned earlier, there's also a reconciliation at the bottom of this sheet, which reconciles any amounts that you said are going through the adjustment to profit by virtue of those selectors on I3 with what has actually gone through the adjustment to profit from A. And you can see that in this situation, this now reconciles. As the temporary differences from I3 reconcile to those numbers that are actually going through the adjustment to profit, the depreciation and capital allowances, and the deductible as paid movement. If we move on to I7, we'll also see now that our proof of tax reconciles. We have dealt with everything correctly on our tax basis balance sheet. No further adjustments are required for this sheet. I'll now go back to, to my I sheet. As this is the first year of using the I sheets, we must confirm our brought for per accounts values. In my example, I'm going to say that the brought for per accounts is the same as the brought for per comps, therefore I have no prior adjustment. We now need to determine whether our carry for per comps figures, as calculated by one source, are correct, and, what, and the figures that we'd like to disclose in our accounts. In this situation, I'm happy that the numbers that one source has determined are actually my accounts values. So if I go view data for entry, I can click on the button, which will calculate, will populate this, this column for me. Now my tax account is complete. We now just check our errors, and we just have one. This is relation to a new sheet that we have put in, which is required under IFRS for disclosures. Because this is the first year of using the iSheets, you'll need to populate the prior section of this sheet. If you do not wish to, to do this, you can change this selector to not check against the prior values, and it will just have the current period movement. I'm happy that that's the case in my example. So now I'll go to I2, and I can see that my tax accounting disclosures have been populated automatically for me. We have the current and deferred tax note. We have our total tax reconciliation. And then we have the deferred tax balances. There are options to analyze the deferred tax balances into more granular level detail between 12 months and over 12 months, and also to detail amounts in relation to unrecognized deferred tax. But generally, the figures in this sheet should be automatically populated for you. What well, now I'm happy that my tax accounting disclosures are finalised. I should freeze my I sheets to stop the numbers moving as I carry on to work on the tax computation. To do this, I do Tools, Application Tools, Freeze Values on Tax Accounting Sheets. I choose my Tax Basis Balance Sheet Approach Sheets. Some people like to take a copy of the A sheet at the time the tax accounting is finalised so that they can send, then see how the numbers move as you continue to work on the tax computation. You just give this a name. And this will automatically create an R sheet. This will detail your tax accounting figures. Then as, as your computation changes, it will show you the difference between the current computation and your tax accounting figures, which could be useful for review purposes. You'll see now that all my numbers in my I sheets are frozen and can no longer be changed. However, when you roll the file forward, prior adjustments will automatically be calculated for you on the difference between your tax computation and your tax accounting figures. So in summary, the I sheets are the following. Comprehensive, you can complete a tax analysis of your whole balance sheet if required. 
They're flexible. You can override the disclosure captions for your accounts, so they're appropriate to your company. You can override the tax rates on a line by line basis, and you can put as little or as much on the tax basis balance sheet as required. Whilst the approach under IFRS is different to old and new UK GAAP, we feel that the ice sheets are easy to use in the sense there's a logical progression from the data entry on the tax basis balance sheet to the tax accounting disclosures. First, you complete the tax basis balance sheet. You then think about the movement and does it address the profit. You then analyse movement between OCI and equity, etc and then review the proof of tax. Once you've done that, the tax accounting disclosure notes should be populated for you. As mentioned earlier, we've added some new functionality to try and help you with your comparatives. This is called the tax accounting archive functionality, and it is a new option on the tools application tools menu. What this functionality does is it takes a copy of, of your file when your 2014 tax accounting under the old gap is complete. When you are then ready to prepare your comparators under the new gap, you go back to this tax accounting archive file and develop in either the I or the J sheets to prepare the new tax accounting disclosures. You must remember that other changes may be required to the computation to reflect the different treatment under IFRS or IFRS 102. So let's have a look at this in, a, in an example file. In this file, I've created my 2014 figures in a one source corporation tax file using the F sheet, so I'm reporting under old UK gap. I'm happy that my tax accounting is finalized, so I use the freeze option and freeze these numbers. Once I've done that, I'm most likely going to carry on working on the tax return. However, I want to be able to go back to this file at this point in time, at a later date, and prepare my tax accounting numbers for 14 under the gap that I am moving to, for instance, either FRS 102 or IFRS. So what I do is, under the Tools, Application Tools, Tax Accounting Archive, what this does is it saves a copy of the file and gives it a watermark. This file can now no longer be used for e-filing or any of that. When you are ready to do your comparatives, you go back to this tax accounting archive file and develop in the tax accounting sheets relevant to the accounting standard that you're moving to. So let's say I'm moving to the J sheets. Now I can complete my tax accounting under FRS 102 using the same figures that I use to complete my F sheets numbers. Remember, you may need to change your profit or other figures within the computation as these may have changed from accounting under a different accounting standard. So now let's have a look at the other options available to you within one source corporation tax in relation to tax accounting. Firstly, we'll look at standalone tax accounting. In brief, the standalone tax accounting sheets are quick, easy, and allow you to prepare high level draft computations to prepare your tax accounting disclosures. The tax computation itself in the standalone module has fewer calculation sheets, making it quicker to prepare a current tax computation. It's important to note that it still uses the same tax accounting sheets as in integrated computations do. Therefore, it's the it's a current tax computation that is cut down, as opposed to the tax accounting sheets being cut down. The standalone module supports both old and new UK GAAP and also IFRS calculations. You can link the standalone modules to a tax reporting group module to allow you to do your group consolidations. To find this 
functionality in the software. Go to File, New, Corporation Tax, Tax Accounting. So how can the standalone tax accounting module help you? Well, for group tax accounting purposes, it may be useful to prepare summary tax computations for each individual entity, but at a very high level where less detail is required. Or, if you're actually doing your entity tax accounting using standalone, this could be useful for situations where one team prepares the tax account disclosures and another team prepares the tax return and you cannot have access to the same file at the same time. Therefore, you need these processes to be run in different files rather than the same file. Or perhaps you just, just don't want to do your tax accounting numbers in the same file as your tax return numbers. So what are the main differences between the integrated tax accounting sheets and standalone tax accounting sheets? Well, as mentioned earlier, it's not the tax accounting sheets that are different. They're the same. It's the actual computation you use to prepare your tax accounting disclosures that is different. Firstly, there is a different A sheet. So the adjustment to profit is different. You can manually enter your add backs onto the A sheet rather than filling in a profit and loss and analysing out all your expenses non-deductible and income not taxable etc amounts. Because we are not using the same A sheet as a main computation, this does mean that some of the tax logic is not inbuilt within the standalone tax accounting mo module. This means that in cases such as losses, you will need to manually allocate any losses that need to be offset against the appropriate profits. And it is up to the user to ensure that these calculations are correct and that losses are, are offset in the correct order. There are also fewer optional sheets to develop. So instead of having a long list of items on your menus, there'll just be a few that you can use to analyze your amounts. The general allowances sheet is used for most capital allowances rather than you being able to develop lots of different capital allowance pools. You can only consolidate standalone tax accounting modules into a tax reporting group module. A tax reporting group module only deals with tax accounting rather than all other functionality such as group relief and other items. So how can the group module help you with your tax accounting? Well, the group module consolidates all the tax accounting sheets from your underlying entity files, aggregates these numbers and provides you with consolidated disclosures. Consolidation and gap adjustments can then be made at the group level. Payments for group relief can also be pushed down into the underlying files via the group module. We have a separate group module called the Tax Reporting Group, which ju deals just with tax accounting sheets and standalone tax accounting files. This may be useful if you want to keep your tax reporting separate from your main group module. Note that you can attach an entity file to both a tax reporting group and a main group file. We also have a sub-consolidation functionality which we'll go to in more detail on the next slide. The subgroup consolidation functionality allows you to prepare tax accounting disclosures for each subgroup and then consolidate these into a main group module. Each company is linked individually to the main group module, but also to a tax reporting group which represents your subconsolidation group. Each of these subconsolidations is also linked to the main group module. This allows one source to check at the main group module level that the total tax accounting disclosures of all the individual companies is equal to the total tax accounting disclosures of all the subconsolidations added together. 
So let's have a look at a demo of the group module itself. The group module aggregates the individual entity tax accounting numbers into the group module and prepares your group tax accounting disclosures for you. In my example file, I have developed the J sheets, the tax accounting group module sheets. The group module supports both old UK GAP and new UK GAP and IFRS calculations. As you can see, it aggregates the numbers for the tax account, the tax account disclosures, and also allows you to push down figures into your underlying files in relation to group relief payments or debt cap or transfer pricing adjustments between companies. There should be limited data entry required at group level as it picks up the numbers from the underlying files for you and aggregates them. However, you may need to make some consolidation adjustments and you can do so using the, the columns provided. You can assert as many columns as needed. Once you have added in your consolidation or gap adjustments, your group tax accounting disclosures should be prepared for you. We thought we'd touch briefly on our deck and tax accounting, as this is obviously a very important topic at the moment, as there are many different approaches to the tax accounting and accounting treatment for our deck. Once as corporate tax brings in the our deck onto the tax account, it is not treated as going through the tax line by default, as this is an above the line credit. However, if the NIC PAYE cap bites, we have had feedback that this means the R debt may be treated as going through the tax line as the accounting treatment changes. As such, we've added a selector to the tax account to allow you to do this. Additional feedback from some clients has suggested that the R deck should not be in the tax account at all. We have therefore added a selector in version 7.1, which allows you to remove the R deck from the tax account altogether. Hopefully these options will allow you to be flexible and decide which treatment is correct for your accounting policies. Please note you must ensure that the R deck computation sheet itself is completed correctly depending on what option you choose. A brief look at what's coming in the future. We're currently working on some new revaluation re sheets for FRS 102 to, to help you prepare deferred tax calculations for any revaluations you may have. We're also looking at ways of identifying OCI and equity adjustments from the tax computation. and looking at how we can implement tax accounting sheets into other countries or perhaps other PACs. We are also open to any suggestions or improvements that you think could be made to the tax accounting sheets. So please do let us know via the helpline if you have any anything you'd like to see in the tax accounting sheets going forward. Finally, thank you very much for listening.